Joseph Voltolini, the man who would eventually become famously known as Bazooka Joe, made his professional debut 2000, in the year of 2010, uh, May 14th, and defeated Max Chin by TKO in the very first round. He would continue to fight and rack up a string of knockout victories. He would have six fights, he would go 6-0, and and all six would be stopped by a knockout or TKO. After he had all these fights up together, he made a huge step up in competition at Lion Fight number 7, where he faced off against Gregory Chaplin. Now, this was Joseph Voltolini's 7th fight. It was Gregory Chaplin's 63rd fight, and he had already been a two-time world champion, a national champion, and a Muay Thai champion as well. The fight would go the distance, it was the first one that did, and Joseph Voltolini would lose the unanimous decision. After this loss, he would next fight Mehdi Baghdad, a fight that would also go the distance. Five rounds, however, this time, Joseph would emerge victorious. After this, Joseph faced off against Mirat Direki. Um, again, a major step in competition. Mirat Directory was already a two-time world champion and also had over 60 fights under his belt. He was also a bit younger than Joseph. Now, in the first round of this fight, uh, Mirat exploded forward, putting a whole lot of pressure and trying to knock Joseph out. Joseph, however, remained extremely calm and people found out why he would eventually be called Bazooka Joe. He remained patient and he started to drop bombs on Mirat, which would eventually lead to a TKO in the third round, and that was after he had thoroughly dominated Mirat with patience inside the second round. His next fight took place the same year, June 22nd, where he faced off against Francis Ambang, who he defeated by TKO in the third round. After that, the same year, he closed off 2013 with a TKO victory in the third round over Kareem Gaji. After this fight, he went to fight in the uh, Glory Welterweight Tournament. He would fight two times in one night, and the winner of the tournament would be crowned the welterweight champion. He first faced off against the undefeated Raymond Daniels. And a lot of people were afraid of Raymond Daniels. He had a very fancy style, uh, similar to something we see from Israel Adesanya, um, Anderson Silva, and Michael Venom Page. Uh, his, his style was also very similar to Wonderboy Thompson. Uh, people just don't know him as well. They should respect him more. He has very good uh, stand-up. But Raymond had a very similar style to those guys. He would hop around the ring a lot. He would throw a lot of low kicks. He would measure very well with his opponents. He would play a distance game of tag with them, which is really what fighting is. He tried using these tactics against um, Joseph, and they appeared to work in the first round. But Joseph remained calm, went on, went on through the fight, uh, and began to pick Daniel apart bit by bit. If you watch the entire fight, it's beautiful as you see how he literally breaks him down. And he's doing it while remaining extremely patient. It's like he's reading his opponent very clearly. And eventually, by the end of the second round, you could tell that there was nothing Raymond could really do to hurt him. Everything else was just a pretense. He was trying to act like Joseph wasn't hurting him. But people who have been in there and fought before or have been kicked, they can tell who's really being hurt. He would eventually knock him out in the third round. After that, he would face against Nikki Holskin, who, like his previous opponents, had way more experience than he did. And he would, uh, the first round, a lot of people gave it to Nikki. The second round, they gave to Joe. So going to the third round, it was one and one for each. And both men started to throw bombs, trying to bring home a knockout win. However, at the last second, Nikki would uh, eventually win the fight by TKO when he would drop Joseph at the end of the round. And the ref would stop the fight. After this loss, this would be uh, Joseph's last loss, however. And the next year... 2014, June 21st, he would face off against Mark DeBont for, in a five-round fight to decide who the welterweight championship of glory would be. And this fight was uh, beautiful. All out war. Joe poured the pressure on against his opponent. He would eventually uh, drop Mark inside of the fight. Mark would rise up off the canvas and would come back, and he would drop Joe. However, after a hard-fought five-round decision, Joseph would emerge victorious and became the welterweight champion. However, sadly, this would be his last fight to date. It's been six years since he has fought professionally, and I seriously doubt he's going to make a comeback. The reason why was after this fight, even though he won, he had a severe concussion. And he goes into detail about it on the Joe Rogan podcast if you want to hear him talk, hear him describe what it was like to go through it. It was horrible. He said it was like being locked in a dark room. He was in constant pain. He had headaches. So he had to make a decision to hang it up for his own health. So uh, in a fight career, he fought 14 times. He had 12 fights, 
oh, sorry, 12 wins, 10 by knockout, and 2 by decision. How good was he? Now, first off, I want to point out that not only did he win these fights against opponents who had way more experience than he did, he also won these fights while at the same time working a full-time job and a part-time job. Uh, he would teach, and he would uh, also, after he was done teaching, he would close up his uh, business, and he would go and train at night to fight. Also, when he grew up training, he grew up in Canada, and Canada has some very strange rules about their uh, kickboxing over there, so it was very difficult to get elite-level people to spar and train with. However, he managed to you know, seek these people out and find them, so he was very determined. He was always the underdog, not just inside the ring, but he was also the underdog in terms of training. He didn't have as much time to train because he worked a full-time job. He didn't have the elite people around him to train with. You know, like Boss Rutten, he grew up in Holland where they have some of the best kickboxers on the planet. So, Joe didn't have all of those accommodations, yet he was still able to give, put on good fights. He gave Nikki Holskin a very good fight, who's one of the best champions Glory ever produced. Or rather, just or rather, put on show to display. You know, he he did the work himself, not taking anything from him, and he eventually became the welterweight champion. And had it not been for his injury, I have no doubt he would have defended his belt. But that's more so what if. How good was Joe, Joseph Voltolini, In my opinion, he remains the top ten for his era of uh, welterweights, if not the top five, because he fought the absolute best. He fought people who had way more experience than he did. And he emerged victorious the majority of the time. He only had one loss against top competition in Nikki Holskin. He defeated Raymond Daniels, who was undefeated. He defeated Kareem Francis, and um, who were former champions and who had way more experience than he did. And he defeated Mark DeMont, who also, even though he was younger than Joe, had way more experience than he did fighting professionally and was a current champion. So, you know, Joseph was one of the best. One of Joseph's biggest strengths, I feel, was his technical aspect toward the sport. He would take things that were very basic, like leg kicks, jabs, hooks to the body, but he would apply them properly like a lot of even elite fighters don't usually do. And you can see this in his fights. Because he was fighting competition that had a lot more experience than he did, he would never ever fight their fight to gain victory. He would force them to fight his fight. His fight was very patient, very basic, but it was also very effective. And it was not boring to watch. I give him a lot of props for that, but also, not just his strategy for fighting, but also in his training. It might interest you to know that Joseph Voltolini achieved all he did without ever training one day to run for his fights to build cardio. He trained to fight like he was going to fight. And his attitude was seen through his actions inside the ring, as well as outside of the ring. Just looking at the man and hearing him talk, you wouldn't think he was a killer, but he was. He was the guy who would come there to always knock out people and always finish people inside the ring. Basically, he's kind of like the GSP of kickboxing as far as attitude goes for me. He's not the bad guy, he's a player of hype. But when he fights, he lives up to all the hype. Do you agree? Disagree? Yes, no? Maybe so? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.